Thank you everyone for your patience. We're having some technical difficulties. Meetings working? Yep, everything's good. We just won't see it. Thank you. Please rise. Pledge of allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, the Republic of America, for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Virginia, can we please have a roll call? Yes. Mayor Wallace. Present. Councilwoman Engelhart. Present. Councilwoman Wallace. Here. Councilwoman Johnson. Here. She's here. She's on the phone. She's here. She's on the phone. Sorry. Can you hear me? I'm here, Virginia. Hello, yes, thank you. Councilwoman Kelso? Here. She said here. Lubin. Here. Councilman Gary? Absent, Virginia. Thank you. You're welcome. Councilman Robinson? Here. Councilman Vitarelli? Here. Member of the solicitor? Here, present. That would be Attorney Adam Flagger. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, our borough manager, Judith. Thank you. Present. Thank you, Virginia. <laughs> Mr. Flagler, would you like to talk about the executive session we just had? Yes, we just met in executive session where we discussed uh, personnel litigation and police matters. Uh, we also had an executive session on January 11th where uh, personnel matters were discussed. Thank you. I will now move on to announcements. Um, 3A, the presentation concept sketch plan for the car wash to 25 Plaza Boulevard. Um, Olympus Pines LLC has been postponed to February 20th. We will now have an have a, a announcement presentation um, by Donna Wilson concerning the Winterfest. Good evening, uh, Council. Can you hear me now? Okay. All right. Um, just there's. I'm here just to talk a little bit about Winterfest. Um, just wanted to thank a few people for their continued continued support and help with our 2023 Winterfest parade. First, I want to once again thank Hot Rods, who was our host and sponsor. Uh, Steve Bivens is always there for me when there is something I need concerning the parade. Second, I want to thank Corporal Smith and the Marshall Police, as well as John Later and the Borough Boys, for being at the corners, helping to keep everyone safe during the parade, as well as John Weiss and the Marshall Fire Company for leading our parade. Thank you to Pastor Mario for once again opening the church's uh, parking lot to help uh, for us to line up. Another thank you goes out to Erica Foraker of Keller Williams Real Estate for supplying everyone with hot chocolate and coffee at the lineup. And thank you to, I guess, about to be ex-councilman John Perry and his wife, Cindy, for graciously giving each member of the Winterfest Court a gift card. They were very surprised and appreciated your thoughtfulness. Thank you to Cassandra Anjouar, 
uh, of Italian recent creations for, for uh, the beautiful ribbons she created for the court. Also, thank you to the many residents and organizations who donated all the candy to be tossed to the many residents enjoying the parade. And last but not least, thank you to all who participated in our parade to make it a success. Lastly, I'd like to thank Council for giving me the opportunity to organize the parade again. Because everyone knows that me, everybody that knows me knows that I love a parade. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was my pleasure and I'm already looking forward to next year's parade. So Council, I wanted to give you the date for next year's parade for approval so we can have it on um, the, uh, the calendar. It will be Saturday, December 7th, 2024 at 10 a.m. And then we will have a rain date of Sunday, December 8th, 2024 at 1. So all residents, please mark your calendars. Join us for the fun. Thank you. One, qu one quick question, Donna. You said Sunday the rain date would be at 1 o'clock? Yes. The reason being is Pastor Mario uses the church. Uh, we need to, and because there's too many churches involved in the parade, so we need to stagger right. that time down so that the churches can be in the parade. Now, I don't, I, you do a great job with it. It's, you, I don't, I'm not, I don't want to say any, um, this isn't mean, but like on Sat, like when we do it on Saturday, because some people had said that it's, it, if, if it was done in the afternoon, it would be a little bit warmer, like 10 o'clock, it's chilly, can't do it. If we do, if, if you're going to run into Yardley's parade. Oh, uh, okay. We stagger the times so of people who are in the parade. Also, people leave our parade. One one group left our parade and went headed right down to Philly for another parade. So okay. It's always been 10 o'clock. It's okay. the easiest for us to do. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Donna. Um, we will now have public comment. Um, please limit your... Uh, your time to three minutes. Um, we first have um, is Holly Harmon. Would you like to come front and give your name and your address? Thank you. Yes, and Holly Harmon, 371 Plaza Boulevard. Um, I just had two things of concern. One was that the agenda added the vote on replacing the attorney at the last second. Um, I believe that deprived people like me uh, from showing up and making comment. I mean, I was home ill, but I would have made a point of getting here to talk about it. Secondly, the PennDOT meeting at the end of the month. Um, I don't recall that being discussed, voted on, advertised, or put on the calendar. Is that going to be a legit meeting? Yes, it is. Okay, because I don't believe that's the protocol. Thank you. Thank you. The next person is Debbie Colgan. Good evening, Debbie Colgan, 120 West Hendrickson Avenue. I'm here speaking on behalf of the Environmental Advisory Council. Um, the EAC looks forward to a new year of continued progress and many successes for Morrisville. Marsville will have many great opportunities throughout the year to become a more resilient and sustainable community. And with that, we make Marsville an attractive place to live, work, and play. Preservation, protection, and improvement of our, our many environmental, historic, and cultural resources work synergistically with other economic endeavors. Um, economic development initiatives to promote Marsville as the place to be. The EAC has many plans, tree plantings, cleanups, nature walks, and programs that support our environment and brings our community together. Seizing opportunities for clean energy infrastructure grants is exciting. Many of these grants do not require any matching funds or grant writing fees and are risk free. Exploring our options for clean energy at reduced costs through, through community choice aggregation helps our environment and our wallets. These are initiatives that support our environment while attracting positive economic, economic endeavors. On behalf of the EAC and the Marsville Bird Town, we would like to present this frame print, frame Marsville Bird Town print. 
um, by Marsville artist Joe Kemp to be displayed at Borough Hall. Marsville has been a bird town since 2015, participating in the mission to promote community-based action to create a healthier and more sustainable environment for birds, wildlife, and people. We look forward to continuing to celebrate and support the rich biodiversity within our borough. EAC looks forward to working with the borough and the, op and the community on our upcoming events and programs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, give it to Judith. That is beautiful. How wonderful. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Very nice. Thank you. Sure. Please do. Jane Berger, 90 West Maple Avenue, Marsville. Good evening, everyone. Congratulations to those that are coming. Right thing, right way, right reason. Go Marsville. Um, I happened to be at the Marshall Methodist Church yesterday, and I saw two notices on the outside door that the voting polling places for the third ward and the fourth ward are, are planned to be held at the Marshall Methodist Church. I wasn't able to get through to the point of elections today. I don't know if that applies to the special election for Representative John Galloway seat on February 13th, but I just want everyone to be aware that this is happening, and I'm not sure how it was initiated because it applies to obviously both polling places that uh, had been the Marsville School. So if you have any information of why it's the change, we can just people know because our next meeting uh, is after the special election. Jane, I know the county reached out to us for the special election in Morrisville. We'll be at the public library, the Morrisville Public Library. That was what we were just the working, second the second ward. The Board of Elections said today that they don't know where it's being held because I work Ward 3 and they called me to confirm that I was working the special election. And when I asked them to confirm the location, they said it hadn't been confirmed yet. Well, I know that we sent an email confirming that this for the second ward, it will be at the library, the Morrisville Library. We have, we have emails confirming that with the county, unless something has changed that we're, we're unaware. No, the, it would be at the Methodist Church, third and fourth, okay. and then first will still be at the Senior Center. But I, I just wanted to alert the public to that. Thank you. The, there may be notices sent to all the, the voters, there may not, but keep your eye out to find out where you vote for the elections. Thank you for permitting me to speak, Madam. Oh, thank you, Jean. Um, it's just to remind the public, February 13th is a special election for the um, John Galloway seat. So please come out and vote. Has everyone had a chance to look at the minutes? Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Andrew, you moved. I'll second. Okay, and Helen second. Thank you, Helen. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. The minutes have pa been passed. Thank you. Um, can we please have move on down to finance and have a treasurer's report? The report is in the uh, folder that you received and in the drop. So we would uh, move to 6B for, I'll hand that over to you. What, what, oh. 6B, motion oh, 6B. Oh, you want me to do something? Okay, oh. sorry. Do we have a, a motion to um, approve the treasurer's report? We don't do oh, do we, okay, a motion to approve the bills as listed. Can I, Andrew, um, Made the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, second from Marie. Okay. I wasn't too sure if it was Melissa or Marie. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed say nay. Our bills will be paid. Thank you very much. Reports. Mayor, do you have a report for us? Thank you. Good evening, everyone. 
I want to take a moment to express my heartfelt gratitude to Corporal Smith and the Morrisville Police Department for their unwavering commitment to ensuring the safety of our community. Their hard work and dedication do not go unnoticed, and we are fortunate to have such a dedicated team looking out for us. Over the past month, we observed an increase in car thefts, not only in our community, but also in neighboring areas. We are actively addressing this issue and would like to remind everyone to take precautions. Lock your car, secure your valuables, and be vigilant, especially during these cold months. If you need to warm up your car, please ensure it's locked if possible. If not, keep an eye out. I'm pleased to share that thanks to the swift response and the cooperation of our community, we were able to identify a suspect linked to multiple thefts within 24 hours. Your willingness to come forward and share information is invaluable, and it truly exemplifies the strength of our community. A special note of appreciation goes to Officer Erica McIntyre, who has dedicated 24 years of service to the Morrisville Police Department. Erica has decided to retire, and we extend our deepest thanks for her years of service. Her last day will be the Sunday, 121. We wish her all the best in her future endeavors. In my previous mayor's report, I mentioned ongoing efforts to improve communication with the community. The Morrisville Police Department is working on new and effective ways to share information, and we appreciate your patience. Stay tuned for updates on the Morrisville Police Department Facebook page. I also invite you to follow my social media pages on Facebook and Instagram at Gary E. Wallace for regular updates and news. If you have any questions, concerns, or just want to talk, please feel free to reach out to schedule some time with me. Most Tuesdays, my Barrow Tuesdays, I'm available here in Barrow Hall and welcome you to stop by and say hello. Thank you for your continued support and collaboration. Together, we can keep our community safe and thriving. Thank you. Thank you, Mary, Mayor. I'd also like to thank the mayor because he's the one that built and provided our little um, archway. So thank you. Um, may we have the police report? Officer Smith, thank you. As the mayor had mentioned about the vehicle thefts, there is a nationwide problem with the thefts of Hyundais and Kias. Increased thefts are due to technology flaw in manufacturing in those vehicles, which makes it easier for them to be stolen. Bill, can you just talk into the mic? There have been several dozen vehicle thefts and attempted vehicle thefts over the past few months. Due to manpower constraints, we have not been able to detail an officer on a regular basis specifically to that. But Officer Howis was out recently. One night he did apprehend three suspects who were subsequently charged with attempted vehicle theft, loitering and prowling at night. The suspects uh, were recorded on video. These suspects are arriving to the borough, being transported by another vehicle and dropped off at several locations. Review of surveillance cameras and video cameras from uh, ring units show that this criminal activity only lasts but a few minutes, if not seconds, and the vehicles are gone. I'd like to address the commercial, commercial motor vehicle crash on South Pennsylvania Avenue that's currently under investigation. As everyone knows, it took down the traffic lights in the pole at Philadelphia at South Pennsylvania Avenue. Officer Aspermani has identified the vehicle and the company that is responsible for that damage. We have ongoing communication with them, and I'm confident at this time that the claim process will begin to cover that damage. Last week, Officer Howes conducted a motor carrier enforcement day. The results were very good. The commercial motor vehicles were stopped for numerous violations and inspections were conducted that yielded approximately $15,000 in fines. Uh, please keep in mind that every day that's not going to be the case depending on traffic flow and the condition of the vehicles, but he is out there doing that job. The replacement of the platform scale is an ongoing project. I'm working closely with Fairbanks companies to come up with a plan to replace the scale. The estimate was higher than we originally budgeted. I've been in close talks with them and I am in the process of putting together a comprehensive plan to present next month where the site of the scale if council considers it to approve it, may be considerably cheaper. Just to give you an idea, $73,000, approximately $73,000, would be to dismantle the scale in the parking lot. 
where we could move it to another site and save probably three quarters of that money for dispo uh, disassembly and disposal. Where would you just suggest to move it? My suggestion. I was going to hold on to that information so I could provide okay. better documentation. I'll let you do that. I would, I would rather provide council with photographs That's fine. and measurements so we can all be on the same page and then distribute that information to you before the next meeting through the manager's office. Yeah, just for the rest of the county, I don't have a problem because to take the trucks through town, it's kind of, you know, this, this area is out of the way. Yes. So um, I don't have a problem if you have a viable place to move it. I, I didn't think you didn't. <laughs> I just want to make sure that I measure it, document it properly, talk to the company again. So when I come up with a plan, I'm hoping it's the final plan. Okay. I look forward to that. Thank you. I know Officer House has been using waste management scale, correct? Yes. Waste management, and in the past we've used uh, Cleaner, which their scale goes to 165,000, I believe. 165,000 pounds. And that's mostly our overweight trucks are going to go from the 80,000 to 115,000 pound range. So for right now, that will do. In Adelphi Post Road, I, I don't know where you plan, but down by Post Road, they have um, an area. Maybe Tate and Lyle would, would, would let us move it onto their land because it's not being used. That is a possibility. <coughs> um, I did consider some property that was either abandoned or property owned by the borough. So I would just probably yeah. submit that to you for approval. Okay. That way everyone can look at it and know exactly what we're talking about. All right. Do you, do you also, I don't mean to interrupt you, do you also have the, the vehicle thefts that were happening that Officer Hallis um, nabbed the gentleman? Do you know about what time of night that was? I believe it was after 1 a.m. Okay. Right. I requested... Uh, grant money from PennDOT through Bucks County for aggressive driving. That was approved. The funds are will fully reimburse Morrisville for officers to be on overtime patrol at four hours at a time during rush hour. These details are designed strictly to address the aggressive driving, red light stop signs, passing people over the double yellow line on Bridge Street, those types of violations. The details will begin shortly and run to the end of the month. This is a trial run, but I'm confident that this will be successful and it will be sustained throughout the years. The last item that I have is based on a little bit of technology and radios. The portable radios that we have are aged a little bit, but we need to take care of those uh, by technology upgrades. The radios we have right now need to be tuned and aligned for better transmitting and receiving. Additionally, the display screens have a capability of putting the officer's name, badge number, and the department's name on it in case it was ever lost in the field if an officer was chasing somebody and it came off his belt for some reason. The estimated cost for that is around $2,000, what the fire department and police departments have paid. I made an agreement with Howard McGoldrick of the 3rd District Fire Company, who is a radio technician, and he agreed to do that for me for free. That's all I have. So I have some questions. Um, so the aggressive driving grant that you got, it's four hours a day, five days a week? For how long? It's however we want to set it up. But the, they run it in blocks. So it would run from yesterday, July 5th, or excuse me, January 15th to January 28th. That would be the, the first block. Okay. So, so far I have four officers signed up to do it with a total of six details. Okay, sounds great. I have a question. Oh, we have a question from Marie. That's Melissa, sorry guys. I think I heard Officer Bill to say it was $2,000. Is that for the department or per officer? In reference to the radios? Yes. Uh, the radios, it would be $2,000 for the lot that we have. I think we have approximately 12 or 13 radios, but we won't be paying anything for that. Thank you. I have one last question. Um, 
so a lot of residents come to me and they complain about um, they see cars on the streets that don't have the you know the registration expi is expired etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Would it be viable to hire a part time? I don't want to say meter maid, but um, a, I, I'm not sure what the term is or what their position would be. But a part time person that would just go out and ticket cars that have expired plates or you know trucks that are in the street that but that go against our ordinances I, I don't expect an answer right now but is that something you could think about to see if if that's viable for the borough I could answer that for you okay I don't think it's a good idea I rather assign an officer maybe to drive down the street with a license plate reader to start picking up some of these cars the mm -hmm. police department is staffed and we will do that um, some of the worst confrontations that I've ever seen people come after the police with your parking tickets, believe it or not. I believe it. So I think putting a meter maid type person out there unarmed is dangerous. Okay. Okay. That was just brought up to me by a resident, so sure. I said I'd pass it on. If it's something that needs to be taken care of, we will take care of it. Okay. Thank you. One, one quick one more question. Here, um, I brought up a couple times to your um, your predecessor, and I'm I guess he didn't like the idea of if we have an extra vehicle parking an extra vehicle somewhere. Because when I do my when I'm driving across the country in my UPS truck, especially in the state of Texas, every little small town you drive into has a unoccupied uh, police car and everybody slams on their brakes. If we have vehicles that are here that are sitting here, I mean, I, I get it, somebody has to go out and retrieve it and bring it back and move it, but like a, a decoy vehicle somewhere, I, I, I can't see how that couldn't help. I have used that in the past, like 7-Eleven, the power went out, and that's the only place that's open 24 hours a day without uh, cages over their glass where they have cigarettes, where a lot of the guys that do theft, they'll break the windows and go in. We do use like a police car for a decoy in that parking lot when that happens. Uh, we've used it in some other areas. I'll take a look at it, see if it's viable. Um, one thing that I had read a few months ago, and it was just a, a small article, was that uh, police departments talking about leaving their vehicles unmanned and they were vandalized. I'm not saying that's gonna happen here, but it just is a consideration that we have to think about. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Manager's report. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming out this evening in this nasty weather. This evening, we were supposed to have a, a sketch plan that was provided to us regarding 225 Plaza Boulevard. What will be taking place is a proposal to take down the car wash that is there currently and erect a new car wash. Uh, this will be quite interesting. So I. Uh, ask everyone to please uh, pay attention in February when they come to show us the plan that they would like us to uh, talk about and think about. <clears throat> Excuse me. We've closed out the Melvin Avenue Basin Retrofit Project. This was something that we worked on for a year now. Uh, the information is on the January agenda for approval to pay the final payment. I'm happy to close that out. This was a grant that was approved, uh, so it was paid for solely by grant funds. I, I have a question about that. I hate to interrupt you. Um, the residents are saying that that is flooding more than it ever has. So uh, anytime it rains now, things get flooded and the homes are getting flooded. So it's just not uh, to, the, to where the basin was. So why are we paying them for something that they haven't fixed? They ju did just do a final just fix. Just fixed, yes. final fix? Is yes. it? They this? did and the engineer did approve it. And, so it, and so with all the rain that we've had, there's no other flooding going on? Not to my knowledge. So if there is more flooding, is, is there repercussions we can take against them? We'll speak with the engineer again and, and go forward, yes. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. But to my knowledge, there was a fix and we haven't heard any complaints at this time. Um, so I think we're, we're doing a lot better at this point, unless there's a, unless there's a delayed. I'll take a ride up after yeah. all this storm is done. Thank you. Uh, we held our annual ho Christmas holiday lunch for all the employees. It was very nice for everyone to celebrate together. 
Uh, we're all, we've also been discussing a request for handicap parking ordinance. A handicap parking ordinance would be discussed at an up, upcoming uh, policy and ordinance committee meeting. Um, we've talked to the solicitor about this, and I wanted to let council know that uh, currently the borough does not have a handicap ordinance uh, for handicap parking, other than for businesses and development. We do not have something in place. Um, so it's something that I'll be working with our solicitor, uh, the policy and ordinance committee, also uh, our mayor and our, our police chief and so forth will all be working in coincidence together regarding uh, coming up with a, a good, clear handicap parking uh, ordinance, uh, an application process, uh, the fee schedule and so forth and and who will collect that and follow through with that. So uh, to be continued uh, so everyone can please look forward to that. Um, we also had our uh, kickoff meeting regarding our electrical panel work that's going to be done shortly. We're waiting for the panels to come in. Uh, that's what um, is kind of holding us up a little bit, but shortly we should hear something and we'll be doing that. Uh, the roof, the status on the roof is completed. The final uh, payment will be coming through for that shortly. Uh, all of these are paid by ARPA funds. So we're happy to say that we have a, a brand new roof um, that is leak free at this time. Uh, that's all I have. Uh, if anyone has any questions regarding my report, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you, Judith. That was nice. Um, committee reports. Um, did we have a finance committee meeting recently? We did not because the all our committee committee ships ended on the uh, on December thirty one. Yes. So the last thing we did was uh, approve the budget, and we have money in the budget. As you can see, Judith is spending it wisely. Between that and the ARPA money, the EIT, we are what's known as this is Morris. Also, hold on, cash flow positive for a change. <laughs> So Thank you, Andrew. If you're the two, who knows, who knows what else will be? Um, yeah, thank you. And you're right, all meetings. My last one for Parks and Recreation was on December 26th. And yes, there were a couple people that attended. We did have a meeting. Man, you guys are stiehards. Thank you. <laughs> um, and just kind of a, we did a recap of, of what we've been talking in, in the year. A couple of things we addressed are our, our calendar events. Um, there's a few things we uh, added and a few things we, we um, took out for this next year. Um, and we'll be presenting that at the next council meeting. Um, and then we also kind of looked at the, the vendor application and wanted to get some ideas to present to um, Judith. And then it'll, I don't know, does that go to policy or does it just go to you? That's something that can just go to me. Okay. So, Unless policy would like to review it. Yeah. Um, but we do have a lot of more important things that yeah. should really go to policy and ordinance. Okay. Like Thank the handicap. Did you have ordinance. a question? Uh, yeah. I, I, why, why is that happening? Because we've got about three or four different versions and um, they kind of all get sent out and it's not good for um, Lorraine and trying to make sure that we're get everything that's, ex you know, exactly the same. Like, I, I know, but that's Judith's job to figure out what's good for Lorraine. Like, I'm confused why, like, Judith isn't looking to see what, what she needs. Like, it just seems like your council's getting involved in the operations and we're not supposed to. Um, I, I don't think that was our plan. Our plan was to, um, I, I respect what you're saying, and you're right. It isn't, it's her job for um, operations. We just wanted to take a look at it and kind of, maybe see if there's any suggestions we can to be given. Did, did Judith ask um, for you to take a look at it? Well, we did talk about it. Is, is, are you up? I did not ask, but I know that the Parks and Recreation Committee had mentioned it, um, and I said that I'd be willing to review them. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it, it really should be something in-house, as Helen is saying. Yeah. Um, but I'm willing to work with everyone. Okay. But, yeah. but uh, I think that um, this is really something that should take place with staff because they really know best what is needed. Um, so, okay. uh, so we can we can talk about it further. But thank you all. Thank you. Um, and we want to take to uh, the policy committee um, some changes on the alcohol ordinance. 
So that's something that we'll look forward in. I, I'm going to chair the ordinance policy and ordinance committee. So we won't have one this month, but we'll have one next month. And anybody else who would like to be on the committee. And actually, Catherine, that's what I thought that you were talking about. Oh, when okay. you were talking about applications, I thought they were talking about the alcohol ordinance. I didn't think you were talking about okay. Sorry for the in-house, because really we should be in charge of that. Okay. So okay. thank you. I, I, I didn't. I thought that's what we were talking about, just the alcohol. Sorry for the miscommunication. Um, and the EAC will request council to approve for spring tree, tree planting at the southern end of Williamson Park. So um, that's all the committee reports I have, unless there's somebody else that has any. Okay, thank you. We'll now move on to action items. Action A is a call for a motion to accept the resignation of Robert Perry as council person for the fourth ward, effective tonight, um, 2024. Um, the motion says January 9th. Well, go ahead. The, the, the letter um, uh, was, I think, sent the 8th that it was effective January 9th. As it relates to a vacancy, the vacancy um, is technically created tonight under the, um, under the MPC, you have a certain amount of time to, to fill a vacancy and that starts today, not even though the date in the resignation letter was effective January 9th, it's really effective tonight because you, you under the borough code, you have to um, formally accept the resignation. And then to go on from there before I call the um, for motion. So it is effective tonight. We have 30 days to um, to have another election, which will or no, isn't it? Appointment. 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 I'm sorry, appointment. Um, and so Judith will post that. So can can you just read the motion? Because you're not supposed to talk about it till you till you take it's moved. Okay, it just said discussion of what went on. Okay, so do I have a second? Or a motion, please. I'm sorry. Second. Can I have a second? Second. Okay. Um, Helen, um, second it. Now, is there any discussion? Okay. Um, Virginia, can you do a roll call, please? Bryce Engelberg? Yes. Lisa Longwell? Yes. Mrs. Kelso? Yes. Hello. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Mr. Lubin? Yes. Mrs. Johnson? Yes. And Mr. Bitterelli? Yes. Thank you, Virginia. Do I need to say any more about the process or do you want to? Uh, uh, please know please know that what we will do at this time is we will advertise the position on, on the borough website and so forth as we usually do. And then we will have uh, applications taken uh, up to a certain date prior to us uh, for our agenda for the February meeting. And we'll have a, a, a have it on the agenda for a vote for the February meeting. So anyone that would be interested, please make sure to uh, provide your information to myself uh, via email. It will be on the borough website and so forth. Uh, please make sure if you are able to provide a resume, it would be nice to have that uh, along like I, with, like I said, a, a letter of uh, interest regarding this. And uh, please make sure and get that to us so we can have these items and your names for the next February agenda. That would be February 20th that we'll have the next meeting. So it would be due in the second Monday prior to that meeting. Thank you. And the motion has passed. Thank you. 8B, call for a motion to approve the annual Winterfest sponsored by Hot Rides LLC of Morrisville using the previous approved parade route on Saturday, December 7th, 2024 at 10 a.m. Rain date, Sunday, December 8th at 1 p.m. So moved. We have, um, it was moved by um, Helen and seconded by 
uh, Andrew, thank you. And can we um, all in favor say yay? Aye. Aye. Okay, aye. aye. Nay? It has passed. Congratulations, Donna. We're having another parade. <laughs> Okay, 8C, call for a motion to approve um, MIAC um, request for planting of eight trees this spring at Williamson Park, condition upon public works superintendent and borough manager approving the pl planting plan. Um, this will be done at no cost to the borough. Do you have a motion? Motion. Um, did you get that? Ooh, ooh. Oh. Andrew motioned it, yeah. and do I have a second? John, but really second it. Is there any discussion? So I saw on the map that it's on the south end of the park. Is that our park land, or is that the Bridge Commission land? Do we know? Debbie, can you answer that? Yeah. No, it's, it's, not, it's not on the Bridge Commission land. It's in the same section where we planted last fall. That's borough property. No, it's borough property. So my, my concern is that it's it's in the middle of the land which we could utilize to do something. So is this peripherally or in the center of the, the plot? Well, that's what we're going to be working with, um, with Jim and John Mayer to determine exactly where the center of the placement. Uh, the last ones we put on the last fall, we put them on the perimeter. Are looking more at the river on the other side now. Okay. So it would be more, it's not sitting in the middle of it. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. At the middle of it, you can't really do anything there. The river channel is underneath it, there's a gas line there, so it's not really anything you can put anything in there anyway. Because it's got the, that's one of the things we had to be very careful of to make sure we avoided the, the storm drain that goes underneath there that's always holding problems, had problems. So that's not really a good place to put Okay. Got it. Any other questions or discussion? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all in favor say uh, aye. 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 Nay. The motion is passed. Thank you. Can I just uh, yes. interject? Um, as it relates to the um, vacancy, it should really be done within 30 days. Our next meeting. Uh, the February meeting is outside of that, and technically under the code, it goes to the vacancy board. Um, so um, it can still be done that way, but uh, the code, I guess, the code is written to prefer it be done within the 30 days, and our next meeting is outside of that 30 days. Thank you. Should, should we change the date? So that we're in the 30 days, that what the, the, is somebody really going to come and say, oh, you guys, we're taking it over? I'm, I'm just advising because technically that's what the code provides, that it's done within 30 days. And if it's not done within 30 days, then it goes to the vacancy board to do. When the vacancy board is uh, basically council uh, plus one registered um, elector that that's appointed stands okay, the mayor so, so we're going to have a meeting on the 23rd can we uh, let the public know that we're going to appoint someone i'm sorry on the 24th of january can we let someone know that we're going to appoint on the 24th does that give us enough time i'm asking the council yeah, other, otherwise you could call for a special election for the purpose of that within the 30 days i'm just giving you the options because that's what the code states I'm okay with appointing someone on the 24th. I mean, they, they people would know if they want to or they don't. It's fine with me, but it's, is everybody else? Do I take a moment? Yeah, okay, let's do it that way then. Okay, so we'll appoint someone on the, so for the public to know, um, we are looking for a council person in the fourth ward to, to um, um, take the place of Robert Perry, who resigned, and we will be making the selection on January 24th. It's a Wednesday. It's a special meeting. Thank you. That's a good thought. Um, so what most people do is write a letter or send a resume in um, to Judith. Thank you. And she'll make sure they're posted to all of the council people so we have a chance to look at them. Thank you.
call for a motion to approve payment for the third number three final for Melvin Avenue Basin retrofit project in the amount of $2,252.48 to GNB Construction Group. Do I have a motion? Moved. Andrew moved. Do I have a second? Second. Was that Melissa or Marie? Marie, Marie, thank you. So it's been moved. Um, the motion's been made by Andrew and seconded by Marie Kelso. Um, do we have discussion? Okay, so all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. <laughs> it passes, thank you. Okay. Call for a motion to approve entering a one-year agreement with How Associates. What is it? Huff. Thank you. Associates to collect and submit the 2023 recycling performance grant um, data for four thousand dollars. Do I have a motion? Motion. Marie Kelso and Andrew seconded. Um, do I have any discussion? No discussion. All in favor say A. Aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. It's been moved, uh, moved, second, and approved. Thank you. Eight F. Call for a motion to approve borough manager's execution of 2024 service agreement with Tom Josiah Consultant. Consulting LLC to assist the borough in accounting. Do I have a motion to approve? Um, Andrew approve uh, motion to approve it, and John second it. Do we have any discussion? So, um, what is it that they're going to be doing? I saw it in the delivery, but um, we've had them for a year. Is is this something we really need? I mean, I know you have it on the agenda, but yes, this is vitally needed. Um, these are some of the the items. Some of the items that are being taken place is, uh, as some council people are aware from last year, uh, the all of the main borough accounts were not reconciled for several years. Right now, as we speak, the main accounts are reconciled. We still have all of the escrow accounts that we're going through and getting those reconciled. And those accounts have not been reconciled for several years. So that's just some of the items that we're working on. Uh, there's also more Edmonds items that we are correcting. Uh, there's also payroll items that we're still continuing to correct. So there's many issues accounting wise that we are still cor correcting. And then that's why we're utilizing uh, Tom Josiah, the specialty firm. So what do you, what do you estimate as the monthly expense? Uh, I, I believe, and, and you really can't quote me, some months are more than others. It depends on what the month is. Sometimes it's only $1,800. Sometimes it's 3000 It just depends. He's $125 an hour, which is very, very reasonable. Okay. So all in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> all opposed, say nay. Sorry, I didn't grow up around here. <laughs> I grew up close to Canada. We say A. I'll try to keep it straight. Thank you. Okay. Um, 8G. Call for a motion to approve payment for Burl Hall Roof Emergency Project in the amount of $189,990 um, to ProCom. Roofing Corporation. So moved. Any discussion? Is that the total cost for the roof? Uh, no, thank you for asking. There will be at least one more invoice. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Virginia, did you get who said, who motioned it and who seconded it? I believe Ms. Wawa made the motion and Mr. Lubin seconded it. Correct. Correct. Thank you. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 
any opposed say nay. The motion has been passed. Thank you. 8H, call for a motion to appoint Matthew Weidenhofer. Did I say that correctly? Weidenhofer. Weidenhofer, so sorry. As Morrisville Borough Emergency Management Coordinator and Gerald Simpson as Deputy Emergency Management Coordinator. So moved. It's been uh, moved and seconded. Um, do we have any discussion? If I may. Chief Simpson, you're okay with uh, being the uh, deputy? I figured they put you on, but I just wanted to make... <laughs> <laughs> I did ask before I placed him on the agenda. <laughs> just let the public know. Sometimes it's for the public's benefit. Yes, and I, I did speak with uh, Mr. Weedenhafer also, and he is uh, happy to take on uh, the responsibility. He has been the deputy uh, all along. So we're moving him from the deputy to the coordinator, and, and Chief Simpson will be the uh, deputy. So it will be business as usual, and uh, Mr. Weedenhafer will help us with the uh, changeover with the county and so forth and, and all the paperwork that is needed moving forward. So thank you, Matt. Thank you all. So do we have a motion to uh, uh, approve the appointment of Matthew? We, we, we did the motion. We take, need the vote. Okay, thank you. I, anyone for, say aye. <laughs> aye. Any opposed, say nay. It looks like it moved and passed. Thank you very much for your dedication and help. Call for a motion to purchase 2024 Chevrolet Tahoe through CoStar's dealer Fred Beans and outfitter Tyron in the amount of $79,800. The vehicle be to be utilized for police services and truck traffic enforcement. So moved. It has been moved and seconded. Now, do we have any discussion? This is uh, Corporal Smith. This is uh, needed for our truck enforcement officer, correct? Because it's hard for him to do patrols in the regular cars. Yes, the Chevy Tahoe is big enough to carry all the equipment and bear the weight of that equipment. It will also be assigned to him to drive during patrol. So if he does see any truck violations, he'll be equipped to do that during regular patrol as well as the special details. And the um, unfortunate accident where we lost a vehicle, we've never replaced it, correct? No, we have not. So this would be kind of a dual auto, uh, vehicle? Like, I mean, it, you know, we don't have to replace this one because we have this Tahoe then? Correct. Okay, fantastic. Thanks. Thank you. Call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Motion has been second. Uh, approved. Is that right? Yep. Got it. Sorry, I'm still learning. Okay, 8J, call for a motion to terminate any understanding of business between Attorney True Love Hill Wallach LLP. Do I have a motion? So moved. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? So moving on to that, we'll have, oh, I'm sorry. I have a comment. Um, I just want to state for the record that I don't like the way that that was done. Okay. Um, basically what this council did, um, I did not know anything about this and my colleague in the second ward, uh, Melissa Johnson, did not know anything about this. So effectively with this stunt, I'm going to call it a stunt because you know that's what it was, um, this council marginalized every single resident in the second ward. Okay. And that wasn't nice. That's not correct. I apologize. That was not what it was meant to be. What, what was it meant to be? Um, it was meant for a change. And I thought that you guys had the information. I truly did. And I, I really sincerely apologize for that. What's the 
how, how, I don't want to belabor anything, but you, you provided it to four council people and you didn't provide it to the other four? Well, it was sent to her. To her. Um, if I may, if I, may I, I think I stated very clearly that evening that I didn't know. I know. And I requested information and I requested time to review information. I also said again clearly that there was an entire part of the borough who was underrepresented by that motion because I knew nothing, Scott said he knew nothing, Helen said she knew nothing, and I apologize to the constituents because the one thing I did not is if the other new people didn't know. But I made it clear that I was unaware. Thank you for your statement. It was ignored. So if, if it was shared with Judith and only partial members of the, of the council knew about it, then I guess my question is for Judith. Why did you only share it with a couple council people, Judith, and, and not, can, not Melissa and I? Can I correct that? I gave I'm, I'm it to the to new Judith. member. I'm talking to okay. Judith. Why didn't you share it with us, Judith? If it was shared with you, why didn't you share it with everybody and only select council members? Because I didn't know about it, but evidently other council members did. It, it was not shared with me in, in the manner that it's being said. Um, what had taken place was there was a package that was delivered on a Thursday late afternoon in the borough hall. I was not in borough hall at the time. It was delivered and it was placed with my mail. I had no idea that it was there. And when uh, I came into the meeting, I still had my mail to the side. I had not gotten through. So uh, I had never opened the package. I did not know anything about it. So I, if I were to know what was in there or what it was, I would have, it had gotten to my mail, I would have shared it with council, but I did not know. So it was not shared with me, um, other than being hand delivered to the borough office in a packet. The packet that it was actually delivered in looked like a planning commission packet that we usually get. We were waiting for the car wash plans actually. Okay. And we all thought that that's what it was, put it to the side with the mail, not knowing what it really was. So uh, I was not notified. So, so then back to my question before, um, if it was shared with a couple people on council, but not all of council, and you didn't share it with anyone, Judith, that goes back to my question, is why did certain people on council find out about this and certain people didn't? Um, it was the new people that weren't on. Say again? It was the new council people um, that I knew that. Uh, so only new people on council got shared or only your friends or what, what, why not the whole council? I'm um, Scott. I'm sorry. Did, I, did you just say something that you knew that the new people didn't get it? Can we vote, please? That there were four people on council, half the council didn't get that information? I sent it to um, the, the three board members that were not, were going to be on council just for their information because I knew they wouldn't get it in the packet. That would include Melissa, and she didn't get it. And I'm sorry about that. I don't. I don't know. Do you want to? Do you want to go on? So it was a misstep. I thought that um, it would be in the packet. Um, I don't always get like Helen. You say, but I don't always get all the emails and and stuff. I apologize. It was not meant to. Um, hurt anybody I, I just want to also clear up the delivery that we get on every friday has a lot of information in it and it's information that things that we're voting on tonight it'll have the background in it it is not an email it is a shared box and once it is put in the box everybody has the same equal opportunity to go into the box and pull the data and look at it so there are no emails there's no delivery to you individually so there's a lot of miscommunication going on between the council members but it's not an email and it's not that you can access you're not getting access that somebody else is and if I may please understand that Anything that you're getting in the Friday drop as a council person is coming in by Monday prior to the council meeting. 
if we get something in on a late Thursday, Friday, we already have the drop created and ready to go. So you normally, unless it's an emergency item, you will not see something that comes in anytime after the Monday prior um, because we have to stay on a schedule. We cannot continue to add and add and add to that Friday drop on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, because we already have everything in order. There's a process. It takes time. So please know that anything that comes in the, mo the Monday prior to the second Monday prior to the meeting, that's what will be in the Friday drop. But if it comes in on late Thursday, it will not hit that Friday. So it wouldn't, even if I open the mail, because I know uh, some people say, well, why didn't you get your mail immediately? Um, even if I would have, it still would not have hit that. It still would not have hit that drop because we have a process. Anything past the second Monday does not hit the drop unless, again, it's an emergency. So I just want to clarify that so all of Thank council you. has an understanding, too, so you know. Um, Andrew, call for the vote. All in, all in favor, I, I, say. I called for the vote. Andrew was a second. Oh, no. um, all in favor, say Aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Motion is passed. Any other business? You, you skipped over the uh, committee appointments. Oh, council committees, I'm sorry. So the Morrisville Municipal Authority, we have a one year, a one five year um, appointment expiring um, January 8th, 2029. Letter of interest for reappointment from Helen Halal has I nominate Helen Halal. Any second? You don't have to second on oh. a, a nomination. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. It has been passed. Planning Commission, one five year appointment, remainder of an expired term, expires 121. 2028. Nominate Peter Birkin. If, if, I, if I. Yes, please, um, Judith. Uh, uh, solicitor, I have to ask. Um, there, there was a late um, email that came in from Paul Carsover, who was already mm -hmm. on the commission. And I know um, Scott just made the nomination already. So um, I think we have to go with that nomination, if I'm correct. Uh, I'm, I missed. It's in your folder. No, but I'm saying, what, what's the question? Um, there was a late email uh, just yesterday, last night at 7.48 p.m., uh, asking to be appointed to the Planning Commission, um, which that would not have gone in front of all of council. Yeah, I mean, the so, council can nominate that person or, or, who, or uh, Mr. Birkin. But we have a nomination on the floor not to correct so that you can go with that all in favor aye. 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 say aye. Aye. aye all opposed say nay it has been um approved to accept a letter of interest from peter Birkin. Is that okay. yes he was he was just appointed to the planning commission okay other business y yes go ahead and read this thank you Catherine normally uh, the Morrisville Municipal Authority we have a one five-year appointment remainder of unexpired term expires 121 and that should be it was a typo it should be 27 so I just wanted to make that correction for everyone and then, of course, the Zoning Hearing Board, we have two three-year appointments expiring 1-4-27. One of the appointments is an alternate position. And I hadn't had a chance to speak with all of Council yet, but what we have been experiencing is you see we have some things that are expiring in January, some in February, some in March, some in April. What we would like to do is we would like to have uh, these terms go with the year that is here, maybe the, the, the 27 or the 28 and so forth, but we'd like to do them all in January. That way, we're not having them all over the map. 
um, you know, as I said, some in February, some in April. It's really, uh, it's really confused a lot of the appointments. Um, and and uh, I know um, the MMA has actually helped us with this suggestion. I had actually talked with, right before the MMA suggested this, actually it's spoken with Scott Holbert about this. You didn't know that, but I said, can we please do this? Because it would really be helpful. And uh, we wouldn't have to have the advertisements, you know, all over every month and so forth, too. It would really be more uniform to have this. So it's so if, if I don't know, uh, counsel and solicitor, do I need uh, an agreement of counsel to do that? Uh, is that something we would need on an agenda? Or can we all agree that this would be a good uh, way to move on something of this nature? Well, I think you could do it when you do the appointment for the actual term. Um, yeah, I mean, generally these are, the appointment is a certain amount of years. Um, so, um, we could certainly come back with a list and we could, we could re yeah, because ultimately you, you have a lot of them already out now yes. going towards a certain term. So you would have to yes. vote to change those terms just to change the terms to january 31st and you could have it yes um, and would, would, eventually it might take uh, a little bit of time but then you could eventually have it more uniform yes does that make sense to everyone did you yes does everyone like yes. it? thank you all thank you all so you'll see some things in the future take place in that manner then thank you Good. thank you um judith for bringing that up other business um um, is there a way to put on the uh, website the dates? I know those people's names are on there and then the dates it expires. Is there a way to put the date that it expires? I've asked this before. I'm, I'm sorry, Helen. Can you please say that again? So we have the zoning, we have the planning, and then they, uh, the MMA, and then you have people's names that are on, on the boards is the, or the committees. Is there a way to put their expiration dates so that when residents go and look, they know, oh, something is coming up? Certainly. So, so we're looking for um, their end and month and year end date. Doesn't have to be like one twenty one. If you could just say January of twenty four, December of twenty five. Certainly. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Other business. Um, some of you seen posted um, after the accident with the truck, and. Um, that happened several weeks ago. I was in a, an event or a meeting with um, our Senator Sancero, Steve, and I was talking to him about it. And I said, one of my desires, if we could get the people in town and um, PennDOT and even North Star to come and uh, kind of have a panel discussion um, so that they could discuss what's, what they're doing and that the public could actually talk to them and let them know of their frustrations and um, you know what's going on in their lives and how this is impacting their lives. So he said he tried to get something together. I called uh, Judith and we, I gave her a bunch of, uh, we discussed several different dates about it. And I said, you know, I'm hoping to have this meeting. Um, when we agreed on a date, I called Judith and said, we can do this on the 31st if that's, you know, we'd like to do it then. It was a date open. And so that's how this came about. Um, and uh, I really thought that it would benefit the community to be able to come and openly discuss with PennDOT and, um, and see if, if I'd like to hear what they have to say, but I also really want them to hear what you have to say. So it is open to the public. Um, you can bring your questions. Um, they said if you can kind of um, send them to me, then I can give them ahead of time, ahead of, just so they can see what, what questions you're gonna ask. So um, I hope many of you will come. There's been a real positive um, outpouring of people in the community. And I hope this helps kind of move forward I don't know if it's a solution, but I hope it's um, a chance to move forward and um, see if we have any, if we can kind of change the forces that are going on there. So that's what that's about. 
I'd like to add that um, I actually wrote a letter last Thursday, and I included um, Steve Sinicero and um, Brian Fitzpatrick, um, the Tollbridge Commission, the County Commissioners, some people from PennDOT, and the DVRPC, which is uh, the Delaware Valley Planning Commission. And I wrote to them about our issues, about the narrow streets, um, I can read the letter, but it's rather long. But if anybody would like to see it, I'm happy to share with it. But just about the trucks that are not utilizing Route 13 and Tyburn Road, and I'm asking them uh, if they could put signage up, if they can uh, help us to try to deviate the trucks from coming down our small streets. Uh, there were two 18-wheelers that came down Dieter Avenue. I don't know if you guys know Dieter Avenue, but it's a very tiny street. Uh, you can only get one car down at a time, and there were two 18-wheelers. I don't even know how they made the turn from Ohio Avenue onto Dieter. But I, I wrote to them. I showed them the accident for the house uh, on South Pennsylvania Avenue. I showed them pictures of the traffic um, uh, accident on Philadelphia and Pennsylvania. I have shown the pictures from the Calhoun Street Bridge. I have show I have pictures here that I have given them about uh, the trash that's left and when, tr when the garbage falls off the trucks and what it does to our streets. I have video here that about the trucks, just one after another after another, and how they don't stop at the end of the um, uh, ramps. Uh, I talk about the backups. I, I mean, I talk a lot about here, and at the very end, I ask them what they're going to do to help us. Um, I have asked for air quality studies for the first ward. Uh, nothing is happening. I've asked a feasibility study for building a bridge at Tyburn Road. Um, nobody has gotten back to me, so hopefully when Steve is here, you residents can come and ask him and ask him, you know, what my letter did for them. Like, they, they're very well aware. I keep notifying them, and nothing is seems to be working. So I ask, I hope the public at home knows about this and that they come and that they voice their aggravation as much as I'm aggravated. I know that you've really put forth over the last few years um, – and you have kept on them all the time. And I think as residents, we really appreciate that because you haven't let it go. So thank you very much. That I have not, great. and I will not. Thank you. I know you won't. They, they will be very angry with me. Thank you so much. Not the residents, the upper right. elected <laughs> officials. Well, thank you. Um, is there anything else from any other borough official? Do I have a motion to um, so moved? I guess all, of, all in favor say aye. 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 Nay. Okay. It looks like we made it before 8:30. Thank you all for participating.